Uh, we're going to make some sp uh, some spare ribs here, and for this, uh, the uh, the spare ribs I picked because, quite honestly, as far as pork ribs are concerned, they're one of the least expensive. And so, uh, being one to look to save money, I pick out the ones that are the least expensive. Now, for this recipe, we're going to cut it into uh, into uh, about three rib pieces. Uh, pressure cookers come in all sizes and with all kinds of different features, but uh, one of my favorite cookers uh, is this six-quart stainless steel model. We're going to uh, use uh, these spare ribs, and I've got some some uh, mustard here and uh, some uh, chili powder. I'm going to mix that in, and a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper, and uh, we're going to mix that all around and sprinkle that over our ribs. And then, uh, this is, a, is a kind of a neat trick that's in the recipe. I take a clove of garlic, a cut clove of garlic here, and use that cut clove of garlic as sort of a massage thing here to rub that seasoning into the ribs. Gives you a little garlic flavor in addition to uh, all the uh, the seasonings you put on. I would turn that over and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, sprinkle that on. Now we're going to heat about. In fact, I can get started with that here. While we're dusting this, I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of uh, oil into the pressure cooker, and, uh, and we'll finish these guys off. Okay, now we're going to brown these off in the little oil. So we'll make a sauce to uh, coat those ribs with. Uh, put a little ketchup in the big bowl here and add all of the rest of our ingredients. Uh, some onion and to that we'll add a little bit of molasses. This makes a nice kind of a barbecue type sauce that goes on it. Very good. A little lemon juice uh, goes with that. Some oregano, a little salt, and pepper. You like the bell effect there? This is some liquid smoke that uh, gives it that, like it just came off the barbecue pit here. Okay, we're gonna mix that together a little bit. Let's take these guys out. And we can drain off the, any excess fat, if there is any. I've got this sauce all made. Now we're going to rub it on our ribs, right? And we uh, spread this on the meaty side of the rib, like so. Gives it a nice glaze. Be generous with that sauce. That's good stuff. Okay. And then these are going to go back in the pressure cooker, but first we're going to put uh, our rack in because we want to use that rack to keep the, uh, the ribs up off the, the, the bottom of the pressure cooker and then any excess fat drips down through the rack and you uh, end up with nice, lean, meaty ribs. Okay, these are uh, ready to go back in. So we'll put the rack in. Next we add the cooking liquid. Uh, in this case, uh, it's a cup of water, but many different cooking liquids can be used in the pressure cooker. You're only limited by your imagination. You can use a little wine or beer or fruit juice, uh, bouillon cubes uh, mixed with a little water, uh, anything that will contribute a unique flavor to the finished dish. So we'll uh, put these back in now on top of the rack. And put our lid back on, but before, before we do uh, put our lid on, we want to make sure that the vent pipe here is, is uh, you can see to it. So check that, always check that when you put your, your lid back on. Put the arrows together there, put that on, put your pressure regulator on and turn that on. You want to heat the pressure cooker until the regulator is rocking gently. This indicates that the proper cooking pressure has been reached. And then set the timer for 15 minutes and adjust the heat to maintain a gentle rocking motion of the regulator. 
At the end of the cooking time, you can cool the pressure cooker according to the method specified in the recipe. There are two types of cooling for the pressure cooker. This recipe uses the slow cooling process referred to as let the pressure drop of its own accord. The cooker is removed from the heat and set aside until the pressure drops. Otherwise, the recipe might say to cool the cooker at once. In that case, you would take the pressure cooker to the sink and run cold water over it until the pressure has dropped. This method is usually preferred for oh, delicate foods such as vegetables, uh, which might overcook if the pressure cooker is allowed to cool on its own. When the pressure is completely reduced, the air vent cover lock will drop, and you can remove the pressure regulator and then the cover. And there you have some delicious spare ribs cooked in a fraction of the time that it would take by ordinary methods. These ribs are juicy and tender, and if you like a little crisper on the outside, you can put them under the broiler for a few minutes.